Welcome out to our weekly mastermind call. We appreciate all of you for being here. And last week uh, on the mastermind, we discussed what were the attributes, what were the what was what were the things that diamonds had in common. And <clears throat> and this time, I want to shift this a little bit to what the what the best uplines have in common okay so <laughs> so this is uh this is going to be a little um i don't know if what the word is it may be exposing uh, um but to to uh the diamonds because a lot of times we are we are the mentors of the next group and so i was really interested to know um what um, the best mentors have in common. How do you mentor your team? And um, I'm just going to be straight up honest with everybody. I, I'm not the best mentor. I think this is something that as I have discussions with other diamonds on my team, this is where all of us feel very inadequate <clears throat> um, and where we feel like we're falling down a bit. And we talked uh, a couple weeks ago about mentors needing um, – there were two, kind, two types of, of mentoring that took place. One was, one was an accountability, and one was a uh, – you know, like a, you can mentor someone with advice and things like that. <clears throat> and then there were people who uh, needed accountability where we could really kind of crack the whip, you know, like provide that. Um, but before I do this, I want to read a little bit from the book GoPro and um, just kind of go through one thing that I, I thought was really fascinating. So Eric Warre, he uh, had a, a guy that was very successful in network marketing, and he would he would actually um, he would listen in on a, a mentor of his called Michael. Who um, and the way that he got people started, and I just thought this was really fascinating. I want to read some of this to you. He says, as I watched Michael, I noticed that every time he signed up a new distributor, he scheduled what he called a game plan interview. I decided to model what he did, so the next time he met with a new distributor, I sat behind him close enough to take notes on the conversation. I did this several times. Okay, so that's how he gets this. So there was part one. Um, the first thing he did is he congratulated them on making the decision. He said, I'm proud of you for taking charge of your life. From now on, things are going to be different for you and your family. Um, by the end of the discussion, any doubt that they that they had uh, they may have had about becoming a distributor was gone, and they felt great. Part two. Here's, here's what I love is this part two, what I want to get to. He said, uh, he set their expectations. He knew most people came into our business with unrealistic expectations. So he always said the same three things. If you succeed in this business, it's going to be you who creates that success, not me. And if you fail in this business, it's going to be you who creates that failure, not me. You are going to be the difference between success or failure. I'm here to guide you every step of the way but I can't do it for you. I'm here to work with you, but not for you. Eric Warre now says, wow, this was a radical concept and so different from the conversations that I, that I had when I got the person started. I said things like, I get paid from what you produce, so I eventually work for you. Well, what kind of expectation do you think that sets in the new distributor's mind? I'd also say, quote, we are going to build a business together when that wasn't really true. They needed to build a business. I could be a resource, but I couldn't do it for them. The next thing he said was, my job is to help you become independent from me as quickly as possible. Do you agree that that's a good goal? After this, <clears throat> again, this was was radical, but it made sense. Up to that point, I had I had a group that was extremely dependent on me, they only did something I pushed, but Michael had a group that produced on their own without his constant help. He had duplication and freedom. I didn't. 
this set the relationship up so that Michael would, would be their teacher for this group, for his group and not the slaves. He could show them the skills and they could uh, independently build from that point forward. Okay, the third thing he said was, there will certainly be ups and downs as you build your business. There will be good times and bad times. I'll know you're in one of the bad times when you aren't calling me. You aren't showing up for meetings. You aren't on the calls. If I start hearing excuses, that sort of thing, when that happens with you, it happens with when when that happens with you and it happens with everyone, how do you want me to handle that? Do you want me to leave you alone or do you want me to be persistent and remind you why you made this decision in the first place? Okay, so there are the I, when I was reading this, I, I just thought, okay, this is something I need to share on the Mastermind call. So the GoPro book, uh, for those of you who just joined, this is from the GoPro book, uh, pages 103 and 104. And um, I was just reading about how Eric Warre's mentor, um, Michael, how he got people started. And so with all that said, um, what I want to do is open up the Mastermind to ask the question of what does it take to be a good mentor and what can we learn from what Eric Roy just taught us? Brian, what are your thoughts? Hey, this is a great topic, Seth. I'm glad you brought it up. Um, But I, for one, have a ton of holes in my mentoring game, if you will. I've got a a lot of things that I'm really not good at when it comes to being a mentor. Um, You know, I had somebody the other day that, that that came to me for mentoring and they had a block and I had no idea how to even start (laughs) like at all with this block that they had. Right. Um, and so, but that's not something I I really want to do either, but I think that, that to be an effective mentor, yes, there's different skills you can develop, but the, the number one skill I think that's important is that you have to be able to communicate in words and in deeds that you care about that person and that you love that person. Mm-hmm. And if, if you're great with blocks, awesome. If you're not, awesome. As long as that person knows that you care about them and that you love them and that your your priority is their well-being, then I think you can work through any kind of your deficiencies as long as you can effectively communicate that. That yeah. being said, the the most important role – in the mentor, mentee, is that a word? Mentor E, the person receiving yeah, mentoring? Mentee. The mentee. mentee the, most, the biggest responsibility is on the mentee, in my opinion. And it's because that person is the one that has to go and do the work. And, and I think that, that the people that have made me look like a brilliant mentor, it's really them being going to just go out and do the work much more than it was me having some brilliant thing to say or, or you know, the secret sauce, if you will. But it, was, it was them that, that they, were, they, didn't, they didn't have any kind of hesitancy to do exactly what, what I said. And, and that, that was the hard part, not finding the right thing to say, in my, in my opinion. Right. Yeah, I think it has something to do. I think what you're describing is, you know, when a person is willing to do the work, that you can steer a car in motion, Right. I mean, a mentor, it's very easy to mentor someone who's going, who's going somewhere because they're in motion. Maybe even a better analogy would be riding a bike that's moving because if it's just sitting still, there's nothing you can do with it. I mean, it's, it's just like, in fact, when you're, when you're teaching someone to ride a bike, it helps when you actually are pushing them down the road and they're moving as opposed to just saying, you know, sitting there saying, okay, you know, <laughs> good luck. When you get going, this is what you're going to need to do. If they're in motion, it changes the whole thing. And uh, and I think that's why, you know, when, when Rod has taught us that we invite everyone, we work with those that move towards us, and we mentor the committed. So I think the very first thing is that in order to be – in order to – I think that's advice for all of us, is that if we're going to mentor someone, make sure they're committed because mentoring someone who's not committed is not is not fun in the, in the least. Um I have a comment from uh, Alonto, but and after I hear Alonto's comment, I want to shift this this call because I want to I want to actually hear from people who are not diamonds for a while, 
And here is the question I, I want to ask. In light of what I just read from Eric Warre, what do you think would make the mentor that you need? What, who is the mentor you need? In fact, if you could think, okay, this is what I need in someone to help me become diamond, what is it that you feel you need from a mentor? All right. Um, I'm going to go a long toe. I just unmuted your line, Alonso. Go ahead. Okay, so I I love the the topic and I love what uh, Eric Worre had brought up. And my take on all this is it's all about clarity or gaining clarification when it comes to the the mentor mentee relationship because. When we first start, like, this, this business and, like, someone raises their hand and someone volunteer or, uh, like, says, like, yeah, I want to build, right? I want to, I want to be, I want to, I want to do this. And the, the expectation or, like, the, the things that, uh, they need to do or they, uh, the steps that they need to get there isn't clear both on the person that's being mentored and the person that's given the mentoring. Like I've been asked this so many times. It's like, okay, what's your definition of being a share, a builder, being a leader, right? And every single person that I've asked that question with has a different definition. Mm. And, it's this confusion or this assumption that's leading to like the problems or leading to like the, the, the unmet expectations that people have because they're assuming things that aren't true or they're assuming hmm. things that like no one agreed to. <laughs> and it's like, right. it's like if, if I was to show up at like my first day at McDonald's, for example, Right, I'm not just gonna go there and be like, oh, well, like I, I'm working here. I'm like really motivated. I really want the 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 job, and you don't do the the steps. You don't go through the training. You don't do any of that stuff. How long do you think you're gonna last? And right. it's that shift. And it's that shift that we're going from. When it comes to, like, we're so used to, like, the structure of, like, the nine-to-five job. We're so ingrained into that mindset that being an entrepreneur, being your own boss, is totally, like, uh, a quantum leap when it comes to someone that's first beginning this business. And the sooner mm. you understand that, the sooner that you understand is like, okay, I'm, I'm talking to a person that's used to structure. I'm talking to a person that is has been living their life from the time they went to school to the time that they're still on their job for 20 plus years, 30 plus years, and I'm asking them to be their own boss, to be this entrepreneur. So I need to lay out the structure. I need to lay out the expectations. So I know what to do as a mentor, and they need to know what to do as a mentee. Yep. Thank you for bringing that up. You know, <clears throat> what what you're describing actually just – it actually reminds me a bit of – it reminds me a bit of a, something that David Ellis taught at a, a training a while back, and the, um, a couple years back, where and he, sa he said, expectations – a definition of expectation is premeditated resentment, and and I thought, you know, that's because what you're because I think what you're describing is what you're describing is is that the, the people don't know what to expect, and so we don't know what to expect from the people that we're trying to mentor. They don't know what to expect from us. And so we come up with these expectations, which, again, is this premeditated resentment, because then if something doesn't meet that expectation, then we start to resent it. And then, and then when we have um, 
uh, and then we have expectations on doTERRA, and we have expectations on the opportunity, like how this is all going to work. I love the fact that what Eric Warre, when he started this whole thing, that what he what he mentioned was um, that people had way unrealistic expectations on on how this whole thing works. You know, one of the things I've learned is that no one understands. I mean, I'd say not no one. I always speak in absolutes. I need to stop doing that. But it's very few people know what network marketing really is. For example, many people think that network marketing looks like a pyramid, right? Where you have one, you have a few people on top with this with a team that's growing underneath of them, and they're benefiting from from the the, the labor of the people underneath of them. In a, in reality, what I the way I envision this, the more that I realize what this really is is it would be like a pyramid that's upside down. And 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 that and and it can only grow based upon the the number of people, the number of leaders that you have to help support that structure. And when your leadership starts to wane, then it it diminishes the amount of the the quantity of of people that your organization can handle. Your your organization will grow to a certain point and then it won't grow beyond the leadership the, the, the leadership in the team and their ability to support an ever-growing team. And so, so that's why duplication is so important. You're duplicating leaders to support more and more people, and that organization continues to grow and grow and grow. It's, it's not sitting on top of a pile. It's supporting an organization, and, and, that, and, the, and the size of the organization is, is directly related to your ability to, to uh, support it. So, Okay. So, with that said, and, I'm just, and Seth, I'm, yeah, mm-hmm. um, I just I just wanted to add like a couple things that brought that uh, was brought up through like your uh, talking about the the situation and the idea when it comes to like no one really understands network marketing when they first start, right? Because again, I'm I'm mm. I'm going from this this knowledge and experience of going from nine to five job to being an entrepreneur to working with uh, this like thing called leverage. And you can explain this concept to people until the cows come home, but until they experience it, until they, they, they live it, then they'll never really know what it is. Right. They might have like a, a knowledge about it, but they won't know it. Yep. Which and, brings uh, another analogy to mind. <laughs> <laughs> I remember when we went. I remember when we went down to master uh, mastermind. Some some oh, animate I think is what it was called, but it was down in Houston, and Jordan Adler was speaking, and he was he said he was trying to learn how to fly a helicopter. And at one point, he had to figure out, like, how to hover, how to keep the – how to just sit there in the air in the same place. And he said that he would – that the guy that would um, – that his instructor was on the other – you know, the other side of the cockpit. And <clears throat> and he would be holding the, the, the stick, and then he would say, okay, now, Jordan, now you go ahead and grab the, the control stick, right? And then he – and then the instructor would let go of his. And then, and Jordan, he, as he would be there, it would, you know, the, it would stay in the area for a little while, and then it would go left or right or forward or back or whatever. And then the instructor said something to him that was really, that I think supports what it is that you're saying, uh, Alonto, and that is, he goes, I can't, I can't tell you how to do it. You're just going to have to do it until you get it. <laughs> and, and I think that there's a lot to that, like the, that, that you have a, a mentor that's there, that at some point there's only so much advice that you can give someone, and they're just going to have to do it until they get it, and, to, and that's when they really get the understanding that they, that they need. Okay. All right, I want to hear from people who uh, – this, this is one of the few times I ask people that are not diamond – to give us some advice because I want to understand the expectations that you have and how we might be able to better serve you. So 
what, in your mind, is the perfect mentor? If you could have – and I look, I know. <laughs> Listen, Diamond, we all have to just hit, eat some humble pie right now <laughs> and not take anything personally. Because I guarantee I'm going to have people on my team say, I'll tell you exactly what I wish you were. And that's okay. <laughs> that's totally fine. So the question is, what is the what is the perfect mentor? What's going to help you get from where you are to Diamond? What do you think? All right. Okay. I have Sharice. Go ahead. Hi, this is Sharice. Um, I wanted to say I have an amazing team with some really great upline support but right now I just started building so everything that you guys are saying means a lot um, I just started making contacts and and all of that so as far as my ideal mentor it's somebody that like in your second analogy that gives up gives up the reins a couple of sometimes or the stick is the is in the mm. that says you know what I'm right here let me know how it goes uh, right I actually, I actually just had that happen with my upline a few days ago, and it went really well. I'm doing the follow-up this week. So um, it, it's an amazing thing when they say, hey, take over. You got this. And then you do it, and then it goes well. <laughs> and I know that that's not how it always happens. Sometimes it doesn't go great, but that's part of doing it until we make it. So yep. I to Thank you. That's a fantastic point. You know, so as mentors – we need to let our people make mistakes and be there for them. Like the, the pilot that was there, I'm here. When you make a mistake, I can, I, I can help write the ship, but, but try. See how you do. There's only one way to learn, and that's in doing it. I know a lot of times it's kind of funny. You know, I just use the helicopter analogy, but we're like helicopter parents, but we're just right there making sure that they make the right decision and, or that they do the exactly right instead of just trusting them. Right. Thank you. You actually brought up riding bikes the other day, and my youngest is, is just learning how to ride a bike, so that, that really resonated, but it was a good example. <laughs> Thank you. Great, great comment. Uh, Kathy, I just unmuted your line. What, what advice do you have for us? Hey. So I first have to say that I have some great mentors, um, Jessica Burke and Janet uh, Marquez, and also I've had mentoring with uh, David Ellis before. But some of the things that I've loved from them um, is just that they teach you, right? When you first come in, you have no idea what you're doing. So it's important to teach in a way that that person understands. And I feel that they do that because everybody is so different. And I think as a mentor, you've got to find how that person functions, how that person learns. Because if you just go in with one way to teach, if somebody doesn't learn that way, then some mentors are like, oh, I'm just too frustrated. They're not getting it. You know, and I've had certain people kind of like, what, you know, why can't you understand this? And then I feel stupid, you know. And so mm -hmm. if, you, if you really nurture everybody's individual learning capacities, then I think that helps you understand how to guide them further. And then also I do, I love being given challenges. As a mentor, I expect you to push me. I expect you to see maybe potential in myself that I may not see yet and then push me. Give me a challenge. Give me a goal. Give me, give me a step to take, but then check back and make sure that I'm doing them. Because not only does it show, like, my commitment level, but then you also know my commitment level. And then, once again, have a grounding of where we need to go. But I feel like if a mentor steps in and says, hey, I'm here. I'm your accountability partner. Here's this challenge. Do you get this? Do you understand? Okay, go. And then I never hear from them again. I'm like, well, then they really kind of didn't care whether I succeeded or not. Mm. So, so you I, want that so you want them emotionally uh emotionally involved in your in the assignments they give you. They you want to know that they care as much about you doing them as as much as they did about giving the assignment to begin with. Right, because I feel if somebody's stepping in to mentor you, like if they're coming in with the mentor title, that they're there to teach you and that they care that you want to learn. If somebody's mentoring me, I'm expecting them to actually care whether or not I succeed or fail. Obviously, it comes down to my choice, and you can only invest as much as the person being mentored invests. But, but it is nice to feel like, hey, I'm here with the knowledge that you seek, the knowledge that you desire. I am here 
because I am diamond and you want to be diamond. So let me show you and let me watch you rise. So let me rise. And if I fall, kind of be like, would you like some advice? And if I'm like, I know what I'm doing, then, you know, let me kind of choke on my own words. But, um, but yes, I do like to feel that, that somebody actually is there to actually help you succeed, not just give you words and words and words and then peace out. But here's my words. Are you eating them? Are you, are you filling up on them? Are you getting them? Are you understanding? You don't understand? Okay, well, then let's, let's try and approach it this way. You got it? Okay, go do it. Let me watch you fly and then high five because you're flying. Right. Oh, that's great advice. And let me tell you why I hate it. <laughs> oh, man. Because, no, no, no. It's actually, you're dead on. I'm just telling you why as I'm listening to this. I'm, I, as I listen to this, I realize I'm like, oh my gosh, it, okay, it hurts really. This is the problem with mentors. When you give advice and you give a challenge and the, and the person is like, oh yes, I'm in, they're all the way in. And then they, and then they just, and then, and then you follow up with them and they haven't done anything and they, and they, and they basically just threw your advice away. You know, kind of like the the saying, you put you cast your pearls before swine, right? And they, right. you know, and they just trample all over it. And then, and then, and then you're like, and then when you are emotion, you want their financial freedom more than they want their financial freedom. At least it seems that way. And when that happens, it is so emotionally exhausting. And that what that I'll tell you what I've done. I've got to the point to where. I've given out assignments, and then I, tr- I try to emotionally detach from it because if I care too much, with all of the people I've given, like, assignments to, challenges to, mentoring to, when I give all that out and then when, it, when it's not reciprocated, it hurts so bad that you try to distance yourself from the person. And I've made this mistake before, and it never works when you emotionally distance yourself from it. And that's, but that's what hurts the most. And so I agree with what you're saying, Kathy, completely, mm-hmm. because it's true. It's just so dang frustrating, but it's true. <laughs> because, you know, Jenny Marquez has an excellent um, creating emotional boundaries protocol that could help you not get <laughs> diluted. <laughs> yes, I hear you. But the only thing is, is that the emotional boundary thing is there because you care. Right. True. And so, yep. like, if you can't you can't take away the pain when you care, and that's. But the thing is, is what I've heard over and over on this call. I don't know if everybody's picking this up, but what I hear is that what they want in a mentor is someone who cares. Even Bryant started off the call saying the first thing is you have to love them, and and that means you have to care about the outcome. You have to care about them doing it. And so, anyway, it, it, it is just there. All right, Ali Baker. Uh, you're up. Hey. Um, so I was going to go along with that. Like, Kathy totally was on the same track that I was. Um, so I was like, okay, I have to think of something new. So what I what I feel that I have in my mentor, um, Kristen Fox, is that um, she sees me as an equal and she sees me um, as a collaborator and that she has the ability to learn from me as well as to be able to teach me. And so I feel like as mentors, um, if you're willing to be in a space of humility and to trust that the people you're mentoring also have the opportunity and the ability to teach you something um, goes a long way and that it's not just the you're passing down knowledge to them and seeing what they do with it, but also being in a space where um, they can open your eyes to a different perspective and that you can learn something from them that you might not have thought of before. Hmm. Interesting. So, so you, you like that um, because, because they're, because they're treating you with respect, right? You're feeling like your input is respected. Um, Yeah. Is that what, is that what I'm hearing? So what does that do for you, like, when when the – is it just the, the – because you feel respected? What is it – yeah, what does that do? I know that I can I'm, – I'm coming up with things in my head as to what it would do, but what does it do for you? 
Well, it feels like um, for me, it it creates confidence in, within myself um, that you know I'm on the right track, or that um, you know that my perspective matters, and that my perspective counts, and that my opinion on things is is valid, and that um, you know, and and it, it goes back to that individuality thing that that Kathy was talking about that that you have to be in a space where you can trust that each person on your team is different and there's not just one catch all way of doing things. And so um, when so what it does for me when my opinions or my my ability to teach my mentor something um, is that it just instills confidence within myself that um, that I can do this business, that I can become an inspiring person to other people, um, that, that you know, I, I'm just on the right track. So I guess, I guess it boils down to that it just instills further confidence in myself. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you, Allie. All right. Molly. Harmison, go ahead. Hi. Um, Hi. Yeah, I, this is an awesome call. Um, I just would say, for me, I've always believed that a mentor only has to be one step ahead, right? If you are going to be teaching someone something, you really only need to know, be one step ahead to be able to teach. And so with that, I've always kind of looked at my mentors as you have something valuable, and I am going to listen, and I am going to soak it all up, and I'm going to do it. You know, and I know, like, that might not be every person that we mentor, but if if you're coming from, if you're asking, like, a person that is in that mentality, what is it that you want, this is, this is what I want. Like, a person that's ready, a person that will take what you say and run with it, what we want is we want the action, we want to be the example put right there in front of us. We want someone that is paving the way. We don't want to have to be the ones to come up with everything that is good for our teams and that is awesome and that we can do. We want people that have already done it that can show us how and that they are willing to step up to the place and evolve right along with us so that we don't surpass them. I don't want to surpass my mentor. I guess I shouldn't say I don't want to. I absolutely will. (laughs) I'm not going to stop. I'm going to go and I'm going to do and I'm going to be. But when I'm looking at my mentor and when I'm seeking counsel from my mentor, I want to know they're going to go and do what it takes as well. They're going to keep improving. They're going to keep being innovative. I mean, you look at Apple, right, and you look at what Apple has done with, uh, with where they were when, like, nobody even took Apple seriously and to where they are now. And it's like they keep innovating. They keep improving. They keep going. And... That helps those of us that are watching you and learning from you and wanting to be like you. That's what helps us move faster is when we see that that we're not just being told what to do, but it is totally being exemplified. And now it's being tweaked and it's being changed for the better and it's being done even better and even better and even better. And now we're, you're, you're adding new things and just all of that. And, 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 Though that might be, like, way too much for somebody that's not committed, for somebody that is committed, it makes all the difference. It makes all the difference. Fascinating. Us wanting to move forward. So, so what you want in a mentor is someone who is going somewhere and someone who you're going to watch evolve into a better leader also and someone that you're going to watch become change and morph and just as you are, you want someone who isn't going to be the same leader two years from now, but a better one. Absolutely. That gave me chills. How, it, how you said it just gave me chills. So, <laughs> yeah. No, that's awesome. I mean, no, I mean, the thing is, is it just gives all of us a massive mandate that, that it isn't enough for us to do what we've done. It's, it, it requires us to keep doing great things and to becoming more and more. And, um, yeah, <laughs> I love it, and I hate it. <laughs> it's like, happy. I'm like, okay, here we go. You're right, though. The thing is, I can't deny it. It's true. It's all true. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, we have a couple more hands up, and I'm going to 
I'm going to take these, and I want to, but after this, I'm going to ask, I had a different question I wanted to ask. Oh, well, well, let's keep on going with what, where we're at, because we're getting some great feedback here. Okay, um, let's see, Terry Lee. Terry, go ahead. Hi, um, Terry in Arizona. I want to say a, a kind of a couple of things that I don't know if there's a perfect mentor. Um, when I started the the business, for me, I was looking for the mechanics of building the business, the steps. And this was before X Success, you know, TV and the YouTube. And although some of the material was out there, it it wasn't as great as it is today. And so I was looking in my my mentor, which is actually three levels above me, who didn't enroll me to kind of bring that to me. But my mentor told me that they wanted to inspire and encourage and, and be that, that, that type of leader. And so I heard that from in my ears, but I wasn't listening in my heart. And so because I wasn't getting back the steps, there, there grew tension and, and just unfulfillment, but it was never spoken of my expectation as the mentee. So as time has gone on, I've, I've come to realize that that mentor is actually the person I needed because she – even though she's not bringing me the steps, she has put me in front of people that do that. So that's why I say it's not – for me, it's not quite one person. So when mm-hmm. I needed to get business steps or business views or some other thing, she put me in front of Rod. When we were at convention and I was like, I really want to speak to Alonto, she made that happen. And I got like an hour of Alonzo's time or maybe a little bit more. So for me, that perfect mentor is to recognize maybe their strengths, not ne- and not necessarily their weaknesses, but their strengths. And if it's something that me as the mentee is looking for that they may not provide as well as somebody else, they are willing to get me in front of that person. So yeah. for me, it's, it's twofold. It's not just everything on the mentor, but the mentee has to be able to hear with their ears but also listen with their heart as to what is being provided from a range of people. So right now I, I, I meet weekly, you know, telephone with my mentor, but I also we meet uh, with another team um, as far as, like, you know, weekly accountability and things like that. So I, I kind of draw from a variety of sources, and for me, I, I kind of group them all together as I'm getting mentorship from all of them. But I had to, I had to recognize and not put, oh, my mentor's not, you know, doing X, Y, and Z you know, they stock or what have you, it wasn't that at all. I had to recognize they were actually probably just what I needed, and they would be my greatest champion, my greatest cheerleader, and put me in front of people and groups um, that fulfill all the needs that I'm looking for at different periods of my business. Yep. Thank you, Terry. You know, I think the thing that you're saying there, it's, I think both re- – it's can it, – it actually should be relieving to a lot of us, and that is, and, and it's also just takes a, a big dose of humility. You don't have to be the expert in everything. If you are willing to mentor, what I'm hearing on this call over and over again is to be willing to care about the people that I'm helping. But that, but that, um, but that if I don't have to be everything, I just need to be able to direct them to the people who know what they might need to know in the future. And I think that's a really good point. And by the way, speaking of stuff that uh, I need to change in me. So 
<laughs> so Holly Orgill, she sends me this text, and she says, basically, stop saying you hate it, say you love it. <laughs> I want to reframe some things that were said earlier. So the first thing I, I said I hated was that I needed to care about – I needed to get, be emotionally attached to the to the outcome of the assignments I'm giving the people I, ment- I mentor. And I love it. <laughs> and I love it because it means I'm going to care even more and it's going to increase my capacity to care for more people and about more things. And I just said that I, I, said that I hated – the fact that, I, that this meant that I was going to need to continue to improve and get better, and it is a, a lifelong quest of self-improvement, and I love it. <laughs> I totally love it. I do. Oh, it sounds very hard, but I love it. <laughs> oh, good times, good times. Um, let's see here. Janet Marquez, what you got for us? Yes, I love this. This is awesome. <laughs> oh my word! Wow. So uh, I'm I'm seconding everything that has been said. One thing I want to really bring up is is um, something that I've learned from two of the women that have already spoken on here, and from Yusef. So Allie Baker, uh, Molly Harmison, they both spoke right after each other, which said, "I raised my hand, so I'm like, holy crap, this is so true." Um, when I know that I have been super stressed to reach down and mentor at times, when I'm in a hard, going through a hard time in my life, you know, because I feel like I've got to be perfect for them. Like I've got to have all the answers, just like what everybody's saying, right? And that's like that we all know that's a huge stress. But something that both Molly and Allie have taught me, both of those women have worked on me during and helped me during times that I have been coming up against something, and it has been one of the biggest shifts of my life. Both of, and, and probably, I mean, I, I am very open with with um, getting help, especially, um, and, and that's something that Molly actually taught me, because I, I, I have, I've been like, no, I'm supposed to know, and, and, and um, Molly actually called and rebuked me one day in the same way Holly just did. I love that, Holly. Holly, you're amazing. Um, and she said, you don't have to know it all. You don't tell, like, because when we, when we get into that space where we're like, no, I'm supposed to be this way or I'm supposed to be this kind of a mentor, um, and so I can't show you that I'm human, that's not endearing. And what they end up feeling as a mentor is that they're not important, or, or as a mentee, is that they're not important. They, they, they think that, well, then I must not be important enough because they're not calling me or they're not reaching down to me. And where I'm sitting is I'm like, I'm a human being. Yeah. I see my kid who stuck his hand in the sink and, 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 you know, ripped it up and I'm missing the call or you know, whatever. Like, and that's not that that's happened. That'd be terrible. But we have things that happen in our lives that if we could just send out a text instead of feeling like we're like, um, we're, we're supposed to have it all put together all the time to our team and just say, hey, guys, I'm having a rough one today. Do you mind praying for me? Or do you mind, you know, like, is there anyone that has any advice for me today? And I'm telling you, it is super empowering for everyone to realize that it's an equal transaction relationship because one of the worst things you can do as a mentor is to get the feeling that people are taking from you because no one likes to feel like they're taking from people and no one likes to be taken from. So if you're getting into a space where you feel like, oh, man, this mentoring call is hard. Oh, I don't even want to get on. Okay, well, there's some evaluating that you can do on yourself to say, well, why am I thinking that I'm all like all that in a bag of chips? Like, maybe they, I'll show up and they'll help me. You know, like we're all equals here. We just happen to be a support group together, and I have a few things that I can offer um, because I've been given that stewardship. Does this make sense? Yeah. Do you agree? Of course I do, Janet. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Awesome. This is this is actually very valuable feedback. I mean, and the thing that's interesting is, is that um, as I'm listening to all of this, I'm realizing that um, mentoring is a lot more simple than we thought. Maybe not as easy as we thought, but it is a lot more simple. There's just some simple things that everybody wants. Respect, love, all that type of stuff. That's what they want. Um, 
and they don't even expect you to be perfect. They expect you to be tr- they expect you to try and to care, and um, and to be improving and all that type of stuff. And so it's all great. It's in fact I love it. I love it all. Um, okay, Vicky. I absolutely love this call. This probably mentoring is one of the things that confused me so much in the very beginning. Well, in the beginning, you have to be mentored because you don't know what you're doing at all. And you have to have that person mentor you just about through everything. But then, you know, after a while, you have to, um, you kind of have to let go and, and do it yourself and figure out what you need. And, you know, you don't need that mentoring all the time. You need some, um, a little bit of encouragement, but you might get that from different people. I mean, these calls. Just these calls alone, this is mentoring. I mean, because you're getting a little bit from everybody, and they just, I mean, they just get you excited, and that's what mentoring is about, to get people excited and and want to do more. Um, right. There's, and there's so much to mentoring that you can't get all the mentoring from one person, except in the very beginning. You definitely need it then, because you don't know who else to turn to, because you don't know what you're doing. But after that, you just kind of have to, Try to figure it out yourself, and then every once in a while you might need a little kick in the butt, <laughs> and um, you can get that, which is great. But you know, you have to let go. You have to let go yourself, and then you have to let go of the people that you are mentoring that you know just drain you. Mm. Yeah, thank you, Vicky. And you know, the thing I re- I really like about what you said is that is that there there is an obligation that all of us mentors have both above and beyond caring and loving and supporting and all that type of stuff that we've that has kind of dominated the call it's what was started started out with a long tail and then you talked about it as well and that is in the beginning people do need some step-by-step instruction they don't know what they're doing many times they haven't owned their own business before and even if they have they haven't done network marketing before and network marketing, it runs by a set of different rules than, than conventional business. And so, um, for example, I know that people get ahead. You can get ahead in conventional business, undercutting people, backstabbing people, taking advantage of people. You can, you can get ahead in that way. There's, there, I don't know how long it'll last, but you can get ahead. Um, in this, it doesn't even work at all. It, I mean, it will, it will undermine itself so quickly that it erodes the foundation of integrity and and like I mentioned, this is an upside down pyramid. Your 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 pyramid can grow as as strong as your leadership is. And so if if it, and, and so yeah, so it I but I, I wanted to I wanted to make sure that we all remember that in the beginning, like that quick start guide, that's a great way to launch a new builder because it sets the expectation of how much time they're gonna have to put in their business. It lets them know of the activities that they're going to be involved in doing. You know, no matter no matter what the different differences people have, it's still down to talking to people, putting oils on people, teaching them how to use the product. If you don't do those things, it's not going to work. And so we have to teach them the basics. It's the basics of finding and teaching and enrolling and duplicating and and all of the the, the foundational things that 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 we we know how to do. We have to teach that. But above and beyond that. Um, it gets more into how much you care about their success. Jacqueline, what are your thoughts? Okay, so I have to tell you that I love how everyone's like, I love this call because I absolutely hate this call. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just being totally honest with you. Say you love it. Say it. <laughs> I know. I know. Anybody who's been doing this, for this long and as mentored as many people as I have, like this is this is actually just a very difficult thing for me to even discuss or anything because because this is how I get mentored. Every once in a while when I'm really feeling down, I call you or Heidi and I just throw up all of the negativity. Like I have to get it out, right? Yep. <laughs> um and that's that's like what I do. That's what I need. You know, when I first started, though, I did love having, like, weekly mentoring, and I watched you 
you did a lot of the mentoring that I've seen, and I watched how you mentored, and I've learned just a ton about mentoring by being mentored and then watching. Like, I remember you were doing a men's call, and none of the men knew it, but I was on every call listening <laughs> with, you know. Um, but but I think, I think it's important, Seth, that you say this, and I know this is not what people want to hear, but as long – along with being a good mentor, you need to be a good mentee. You know, like for me, like that hour I devote to someone in mentoring, that is a precious more time in my life. Um, like I am giving up yeah. probably folding like 10 loads of laundry. I'm giving up the trip I could have gone to the grocery store. I'm giving – there's so much that I give to a person in that hour I literally have to. You're giving up, and it is a huge. You're giving up time with your children. I'm. Yeah. It is a huge deal. So, I tell you, I've learned to hate mentoring. But one of the people that has been one of the people I've thrown up on is Richard Heidi's husband, and he loves it. And so the other day I called and I said, Richard, I hate mentoring, but I know (laughs) that I'm not going to go much further unless I learn to love it. So tell me how to mentor so I can love it. And um, because I, I just realized I have to, but, but as a mentee, you have to realize what people are giving up when they mentor you. And you've got to take seriously. Like if someone texts me and says, you know, I haven't done anything, I haven't, let's not do the call, thank you. Like, thank you for being honest. I don't want to get on there and have you hem and haw and act <laughs> like, try to fill up my time. Like, if you have not done it and you have not been focused, then please tell me and don't make this call miserable. Now, sometimes they haven't done anything and they have real issues they're dealing with, and I love to mentor people through that. So it's kind of a balance. Like, okay, if you're going to come to that call and you haven't done anything, you better be ready for some major advice on how to get things fixed. If you say my kids are too, hey, we're going to talk about what do you need to do to get your kids, get things taken care of so that you can have time, you know, like, if you're going to show up to a call without having done your assignments, you better be ready to be told what to do. And if you're not ready for that, then you better not show up and you better let them know. And I know that sounds mm-hmm. harsh, but it is – this is why we have all these torn feelings because I think of hours lost where I love – I'm a social person. I love to talk to you, but I don't want to talk for an hour to someone and not get anywhere in that hour. And so oh, yeah. I'm sorry if I if I brought a really negative slant to this, but this is the reality. And all of these people who are telling us how they want to be mentored will one day be mentors if they're not already. And they need to understand, you know, that that this is reality. And so so some of the things Richard told me that have been helpful for me is, you know, he he sets expectations for those people and he expects that if they're not met that they are gonna work through them with him. And, and that they're going to find a solution. And that was very empowering when he said that because I can totally deal with that. But I'm such a nice person, and I don't like to make people uncomfortable. And so I want to just be like, oh, I totally understand. And a lot of times what they say is very legit stuff, like it's stuff that would really be difficult to overcome or the reason why they haven't done anything. But But the truth is, is like, if you're going to show up to the call and you have legit reasons, you've got to be ready to find solutions because this is a precious moment of a person's time that they are sacrificing for you. And you've got to be ready to, to take the bull by the horns and go. Otherwise, it really can be a discouraging experience for the mentor. Absolutely. So sorry for my negativity, yeah. but I had to put that out there because <laughs> I have just been torn this whole – I'm like, why is everyone saying this is a great call? I hate this call. <laughs> um, I'm like my stomach's boiling with anxiety, and but but I think I guess it's just because I kept hearing mentors no. I want this, I want this, I want this, and I'm like, do you understand what we need from you then? If we're going to take fact, the time to mentor you. In fact, just so you know, Jacqueline, I was going to end the call with what we need in a mentee. Awesome. <laughs> so they, so thank you for that. And and before we – look, we have – I have a dozen hands raised right now, There's I, I, and we have three minutes left on this call. But I, I want 
to kind of just to support what Jacqueline just said, one of the things I read to start the call is. There will certainly be ups and downs as you build your business. There will be good times and bad times. I know you're in one of those. I'll know you're in one of those bad times when you aren't calling. You aren't showing up for meetings. You aren't on the calls. If I start hearing excuses, that sort of thing. When that happens with you and it happens with everyone, how do you want me to handle that? Do you want me to leave you alone or do you want me to be persistent and remind you why you made this decision in the first place? I think that it's important that we all set those expectations with the mentors and the mentees in that regard. I want to let David uh, Ellis, we have a blue diamond with his hand raised. I'm kind of feeling like we got to hear from him. So, David, what do you have to say? Um, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So um, I I just appreciate the honesty and the vulnerability from everybody that's on the call. And, and I, I want to point out something that you can see as, as somebody that's just getting started on this call, you can see that everybody has their days, right? Everybody has their days. I, I'm going to, I'm just going to call it out. Just spade to spade. Today is not Seth Resume's day. Today is not Jacqueline's day. We all have our days. And that's okay, right? I got on the call and I was thinking, I was feeling the same thing as, as Holly. I was like, uh, Seth, you need to take a happy pill. Um, but I realized <laughs> this is the this is the reality. There are things about this business that are going to try everyone. It's going to try you if you got on if you got into this thing to to, to have a cakewalk to presidential. You 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 can check out because it's not a cakewalk, but it is the most rewarding thing you'll ever do in your life. From the from a business standpoint, right? Yeah. And I just I just want to point that out because we're talking about some things right now that are that are difficult. And even as a presidential to be, in in Seth and Jacqueline, it's difficult. And so I my what I wanted to say is 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 kind of along the lines of Jacqueline, um, in that sometimes as a mentor, we have to recognize that there is a separation. There's a difference between mentoring and inspiring and motivating. And sometimes we clump that together and we're like, oh, it's a mentor call. And so we get on there and we're ready to coach and get, make, take action. And like Jacqueline said, in that hour, I want to see progress from point A to point B and I want to see that something's happened or it's not worth my time. That's the way it is sometimes. And this isn't a, this isn't a correction towards Jacqueline, by the way, either. It's, this is just a, a, a development of that point is that sometimes you get on the call and that person, though you're on a mentoring call, that person just needs to be inspired. And so we have to, as a mentor, step back and wait, be like, okay, whoa, whoa, whoa. I got to remove my expectations of my mentor cap and I've got to put on my inspire cap. And they just need, they need a moment to feel of my vision. And of, of what this can do. They need, some, they need some fuel in that tank. And if you as a mentor, if you can step back and realize, I mean, I love the discussion today because it's gone in so many different directions of what a mentor is and how to be. But, but I make it very simple. As a mentor, I have two responsibilities. It's what I call the coaching side, right, which is, is teaching, training. Like that could giving you the nuts and bolts. This is what you need to do. Don't show up if you're not prepared, blah, 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 right? And then there's the other side, which is the inspire side. And if you as a mentor can step back and, and there's calls when I have to go, okay, what am I in here? And, and, and if yeah. you as a mentee, when you can show up in a way to help us, and, and we see that, and, and, and because the other side of this that, that hasn't been discussed as much, it, it, but Jacqueline alluded to it, is the mentee has responsibilities as well. And as a mentor, you have to measure where are they at. Because if you're pushing and you want what they, what you want their financial freedom more than they do, it's not going to work. And so we have to sit back and we have yeah. to measure where are they at. And we have to mentor according to where they're at. And that's a whole nother call, obviously, but, but, but if, if as a mentor, it can be the most rewarding an exciting and fun thing we do in this business. It can also be <laughs> the toughest, most drudgery uh, so part yeah. of this business. 
and it all comes down to what Seth said earlier. It's, and it's measure if you can gauge, if you can gauge where they're at and meet them where they're at, it will be much more rewarding for you. Well, and, and you know, you know, David, what you're what you're saying when you when you're because I agree with you. Um, and this is where you know I'm gonna I'll I'll talk directly to Jacqueline in regards to what she what she was describing because that is an emotion that every one of us that mentors goes through every time especially yes. especially when you're mentoring people that said that they wanted to do it and they're taking your time and your time is, is the time it's away from your kids, from your spouse, from your for, from everything, right? It's taking your time, and and time is the only thing that we really have that's ours to give, right? <laughs> it's like it's the only it's our life that we're giving someone, and I understand the frustration that's there, but I see what you're saying, David, because when you say you put on the inspire hat. Many times, it isn't, let me give you a grand vision. It's just offering someone a glimmer of hope. And many times, mm-hmm. that hope, that little bit of hope, comes from someone who still cares about them, even when, they're, even when, they, when they are, 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 are what feels like trampling on the pearl of your time. Right, like you've given them that pearl, and they're they're just they're, it looks like they're just trampling on it, and then you go. But I'm hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I, um, it feels it feels like like they don't appreciate that, and we still have to say, and you know what? Despite that, I care about you, and I want you to succeed, and I still and I'm and and yes, I'm hurting just as bad as you're hurting that you're not succeeding the way that you wanted to succeed. Um, but let me just end this this call because we're. A and can I say one quick thing, thing Seth? One one uh-huh. just really really quick and give it time, and give it time, because just like this, next tomorrow or twenty minutes from now, thirty minutes from now, something can happen, and and all of a sudden this discouragement or despair or whatever, somebody calls and responds to a text you you sent from a text blitz a week ago, and they're like, hey, I've been out of town. I really want to get together. When can we do it? And all of a sudden, it's different. And so recognize, give it time. Give it time. Continue, be persistent, and, and everything that you desire can be yours and will be yours if you will be persistent in the journey. Yep. Thank you again. Thanks, for everybody, for your comments. I just, want to end, I just want to end it on one thing. What, as a mentor, what we, what we expect from you? Number one – is that you care, that you care where you're going in life, that you care to take the advice that you're given, that you care enough to do something with your life, that you just care. It's it's one of those things when it's so hard to care about someone's divine mission and purpose and their financial freedom and their greatness, their, the greatness of their future, more than they do and that's the thing is I just man if I could give me someone who cares enough who cares enough to work through their stuff because like Jacqueline was saying earlier excuses I hate excuses but I but I love reasons turn turn your excuses into reasons like, if you don't have enough money then to, to do the business, well, use that as the, the reason to do it. If you, have, if you have an unsupportive spouse or maybe you're in a, in a terrible relationship, use that as the reason to do something. Uh, you know, but anyway, I could go on and on, but let me just – I just want to make one point. Everything that I heard that the mentees wanted in mentors is what we want in you. We want someone who cares about us. And values us, and um, because then there's this awesome relationship happening there, and and it's the same thing. Like everything that you you want in a mentor, we want in a mentee, 
and 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 if we can if we can understand that, I think that it's gonna it's gonna help a lot. I appreciate everybody being willing to share the hard stuff and the good, good stuff. And you know what? Thank you, Holly, because you're I love it. <laughs> I love it all, and I love where this business takes us because it's just nothing but but us becoming the best versions of ourselves. We'll see everybody on next week's call. I'm sorry for all those that couldn't get to your hands. There were so many today. But we'll see you next week. Thank you. Thank you.